Good evening, it's Pastor Lisa here, around sitting around the campfire tonight, well once again, sitting with Seuss. And we're going to talk about caring for creation. Dr. Seuss wrote a book specifically to speak out against the environmental injustices that he saw. And it's called The Lorax. It's also been made into a movie. It's about, uh, it's the story of the Wunzler who came into this beautiful land with, filled with truffula trees and, and swami swans and hummingfish and barbaloots. Um, and he decided to build a factory and he made, he cut down the truffula tree and of the truffula tuft he made the first need and he told the Lorax, you never can tell what some people will buy and buy they did and he built a factory and built it bigger and bigger until all of the animals had to leave the land because it was all polluted and um, and the Lorax kept speaking out, telling him to stop. He says, I speak for the tr truffula trees who have no voice. And we think about many in our world that have no voice and need someone to speak up. And right as the Lorax was speaking out, said at that very moment we heard a loud whack. From the outside the fields came a sickening smack of an axe on a tree, and then we heard the tree fall, the very last truffula tree of them all. No more trees, no more needs, no more work to be done. So in time, my aunts and uncles and everyone will all wave me goodbye. Now all that was left neath the bad smelling sky was my big empty factory, the Lorax and I. The Lorax said nothing, just gave me a glance. And he, li and he gave me a very sad, sad backward glance as he lifted himself by the seat of his pants. And all that the Lorax left here in this mess was a pile of rocks with one word, unless. Whatever that meant, I, well, I just couldn't guess. Through all of the years, while my buildings have all fallen apart, I've worried about it with all of my heart. But now, says the once, once learned, now that you're here, the word of the Lorax seems perfectly clear. Unless someone like you cares a whole lot, awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It's not. So catch, calls the once learned. He let something fall. It's a truffula seed. It's the last one of all. You're in charge of the last of the truffula seeds, and the truffula trees are what everyone needs. Plant a new truffula. Treat it with care. Give it clean water and feed it fresh air. Grow a forest. Protect it from the ashes that hack. Then the Lorax and all of his friends may come back. Our scripture tonight is Psalm 8, verses 6 through 8. You appointed them rulers over everything you made. You placed them over all creation, sheep and cattle and the wild animals too, the birds and the fish and the creatures of the sea. So what kind of rulers are we over all of God's creation? When I think about the years that I spent at church camp um, directing and, and with the children and youth. Learning to care for God's creation was always a part of the summer camp curriculum. We would come to camp on a Friday and leave, um, and when we left we wanted to leave it in the same condition that we came and we found it in. But funny, by in the summer by midweek we had to gather all the campers together and tell them to look around. And when they looked around they saw trash on the ground, and clothes and towels all over the place. So we had to explain that caring for creation sometimes means caring for our own stuff and not leaving it everywhere. As I thought about <clears throat> Psalm 8 and what it means to be rulers and caring for creation, I think for me it means being immersed in creation in such a way that we come to realize its beauty and power as a true gift of God. So often we don't even really think about creation beyond the thought of, oh look, here's a pretty flower. So tonight as we're sitting here around the campfire, I'm just going to share um, some of my experiences of being immersed in nature and God's creation at camp. As I'm sharing, maybe you'll find yourself immersed in God's creation.
as I walked um, every morning at Camp Living Waters down the hill um, to go to the dining hall to help with breakfast, I walked by the pond and it was so peaceful and the swans were swimming up around, there were two of them, and, um, and you could hear the Shawnee Creek rippling by, which was on the other side. One summer I ended up helping to mow and I would mow sections of the big meadow of grass. And it seemed like I was just surrounded by the sight and the smells and the sounds of God's creation. In the evening I would walk up uh, to the pioneer area and sit in the rock quarry and I just felt safe being surrounded by God's rock wall. Although I did admit that one night um, I went up to the top of the hill and kind of was looking over the rock wall and the next day I realized how close I was to the edge and how unsafe I was that time and it was definitely not a good idea. So I never did it again. At Slumber Falls in Texas it was just peaceful sitting at the river. You could see the, the rush of the sh of this um, Slumber Falls and the power of it but yet the peace of the little pool coming into the Slumber Falls. There was a few nights where I actually slept out on the, pa on the patio of the dining hall and slept out, brought a mattress out and slept under the night sky, under the stars of God's vast sky. And then there were the rattlesnakes at Slumber Falls. One night we heard a bunch of, a couple girls yelling and realized that before they were, got right before going into the dining or the bathhouse, there was a, a rattlesnake there. I guess it decided it wanted to see what was inside. So one of the summer staff came and got the rattlesnake, put it in like an aquarium until he could um, get it relocated as part of a rattlesnake re relocation program. At, no matter which camp I was at, it was the hikes in the woods being t made me feel totally immersed in God's nature. We saw so many bugs and trees and mushrooms, and the hikes made me feel like I was almost in the womb of God. Just a blessing. When I led craft time at John's River Valley, the craft hut was covered with a screen um, windows, and we often saw God's creatures crawling up the screens. So my many years at camp have allowed me to be, just be immersed in God's creation in such a way that thinking of all those things, all those years, brings a feeling of awe and humbleness over me, that I can't help but feel like I want to do what I can to care for all of God's creation. I'd like to read now the beginning of Psalm 8. O Lord our God, your greatness is seen in all the world. Your praise reaches up to heavens. It is sung by children and babies. You are safe and secure from all your enemies. You stop anyone who opposes you. When I look at the sky which you have made, at the moon and the stars which you set in their places, what are human beings that you think of them, mere mortals that you care for them? And yet you have made them only inferior to yourself. You crowned them with glory and honor. You appointed them rulers over everything you have made. You placed them over all creation, sheep and cattle, wild animals too, birds and fish, and the creatures of the sea. O oh Lord, our Lord, your greatness is seen in all of the world. Tonight I'd like to close with morning has broken, even though it's the evening, but it lets us know that tomorrow a new morning will come with more beauty of God's creation. Morning has broken like the first morning, blackbird has spoken like the first bird, praise for the singing, praise for the morning, praise for them singing, fresh from the world. Sweet the rains new fall, sunlit from heaven, like the first dew fall on the first grass. Praise for the sweetness of the wet garden, sprung in completeness where his feet pass.
Let us pray. God, we are so thankful that we are part of your vast, wonderful, and awesome creation. You have given us the pleasure of living here and the beauty of it. Help us, though, God, to be caretakers of your creation, to be the voice of the Lorax for those who have no voices, for the trees and the rivers and the oceans. Help us to be mindful of, of the injustice, environmental injustices around it, to do what we can, governmentally and personally. We pray for our governments that they would seek to care for creation as you would like us to. We lift up now prayers for those who are in need of healing, those who are struggling with things around them. For all of your people, God, we lift them up for prayer. We are thankful for your presence ever, ever always in our lives and for the safety and security that you bring to us in an uncertain and chaotic world. We pray for your justice, for your love, for your peace. Amen. Thank you. Have a good night.